Welcome to another edition of RCE. I'm your host, Brock Palin. And again, I have Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the Open MPI Project. Jeff, ha- hope you had a good holiday weekend. Hey, Brock. Yep, sure did. And uh, certainly can tell that your microphone is on the fritz. We're going to have to apologize to our listeners in advance today that you, you're you using your laptop mic instead of your regular one. Yes, I am having strange USB issues where I cannot get my good microphone to work. So I'm on my backup Um, We have today Peter Honeyman and Bruce Fields, both from the University of Michigan's Center for Information Technology Integration, better known as CITI. Um, I should point out, Michigan is my alma mater, so I've actually kind of been familiar with CITI for a while. So, Peter, Bruce, welcome to the show. Yeah, hi. Thanks a lot. How about you guys introduce yourself and say your name so people can connect and... Um, give a little background. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Peter Honeyman. Uh, uh, I'm a uh, research professor of computer science at the University of Michigan. And I've been here for a long, long time, uh, measured in decades. Uh, all of the time I've spent at, at Michigan, I've been at City uh, as more or less the staff scientist. Uh, uh, and um, at this point, uh, I kind of run the place. So... That's my gig. And I'm Bruce Fields. I'm an assistant research scientist at City. Uh, I came to Michigan to study mathematics, uh, but after getting a getting a doctorate in 2000, uh, came to City. And uh, since then, I've been working on uh, Linux and uh, NFS, and I maintain the uh, Linux kernels NFS server. Okay, so we're here to talk about the NFS v4 effort specifically, but for anybody who might not know, can you give us a quick description of what NFS is and then get on to what NFS v4 brings versus v3? Yeah, sure. Um, So NFS stands for Network File System. Most people are familiar with NFS. Uh, It has been a standard component of uh, all Unix and Unix-like operating systems uh, since the early 80s. Uh, It was developed by Sun Microsystems. Uh, Well, it was kind of developed by Bill Joy when he was uh, was still uh, a grad student at Berkeley, but it was uh, really matured at at Sun uh, and um, became... um, Universal uh, among Unix uh, Unix-based operating systems because uh, it was uh, a, an open system uh, in the sense that uh, Sun published the protocol for NFS and allowed uh, all of the other vendors to to do their own implementations. So NFS really was one of the, the very first uh, open systems uh, uh, around. In fact, uh, Sun went beyond just publishing the uh, uh, the specs for the protocol, but they made uh, open source implementations available. Well, they were nearly open source. They were quite freely available uh, to universities. NFS is a protocol um, more than more than anything else. I mean, people think of it as a file system, but really, it is, it's a protocol, a client-server-based protocol uh, that allows um, uh, servers to distribute files to to, to multiple clients uh, within, you know, a, a, a strict Unix-like uh, namespace. It um, uh, supports the uh, POSIX uh, interface and uh, uh, looks in, in in every way to a client like uh, a, you know a regular local file system. Oh, except when the network screws up. Anyway, um, NFS was designed in a time when uh, you know local networks prevailed, uh, when networks had lower bandwidth than than it's available today, uh, and uh, latency rarely became uh, much of an issue because uh, everything was was done on the local level. Uh, it was also designed in an, in an environment. It was really designed before the you know the explosion of the internet, which I guess dates to like 1990 or the early 90s. Uh, so security was was uh, uh, less of an issue for 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 NFS. It started out uh, as version two. Uh, no one really knows that what happened to version one. I mean, maybe it's like you know Oracle. <laughs> they wanted to sound mature, so they started at version two. Uh, there was a 
some, some, some small changes were made to it uh, along the way in the 90s uh, to improve its uh, ability to, to, to cache files and to improve performance. But uh, NFS seemed to be stuck at version 3 for a long, long time. And there were some, some, uh, some problems with version 3 uh, that made it, made it difficult to extend it, to scale it out to uh, uh, an Internet scale with uh, the scale of uh, the number of users on the Internet as well as the, uh, uh, the, the latencies uh, that, that are, are common on the Internet. Uh, it was mostly uh, implemented as a UDP-based protocol, and that's just not going to cut it uh, uh, on Internet scale. But because it was a protocol that belonged to Sun Microsystems, uh, it, it was difficult to, to push it forward. Um, Sun had the incentive, but uh, couldn't really develop the consensus. Uh, other folks that were involved in NFS development had the consensus, but uh, they didn't really have the in uh, incentive to improve what uh, was you know, essentially something that was owned lock, stock, and bail by their competitor. So Sun actually, in a very mature way, found a way out of this problem by uh, dedicating the protocol to the Internet Engineering Task Force, which is where Internet protocols are born. Uh, and the IETF uh, formed a working group to develop the next version of NFS. That, that's where NFS v4 uh, came from. By about 1999 or 2000, uh, the, uh, it was pretty well understood what NFS v4 would look like and how it would be different from, uh, uh, from, from earlier versions. And that's kind of when City got involved, when some of the, some of the vendors, uh, Sun Microsystems, Network Appliance, were looking to promote this, uh, uh, the new uh, standard or the, you know, the incipient standard. Um, by uh, commissioning City to build the, uh, uh, the Linux-based open source reference implementation of NFS v4, uh, in that way there could be multiple independent uh, implementations from, from a common specification, which if shown to uh, interoperate would satisfy the IETF's uh, requirements for, uh, for, for new standards. So that's kind of the early history of uh, V3 and V4. Okay, so what are some of the advantages of V4 over V3? Um, sounds like V3 actually, while it had some performance improvements over V2, really didn't have anything to address the scale. Like, our focus here on RCE tends to be high-performance computing, people running large compute clusters or clouds or similar kinds of applications, maybe with thousands of clients. NFS has never really been something that's been described to go on thousands of clients. Is this something being addressed with V4? Yeah, uh, that's some of the some of the uh, later work that that we're doing. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, V4 and and um, how it is dif different from V3. Um, first of all, uh, some of the problems of V3 were addressed uh, with you know essentially with a hammer. Um, Security in in um, in NFS v4 is mandatory, uh, and it, v4 is required to support uh, uh, Kerberos-based uh, security mechanism, uh, as well as a public key-based security mechanism. Uh, this requires some changes uh, to the remote procedure call uh, mechanism that's used by NFS. Uh, there's a uh, an internet standard called GSS, Generic Security Services. Uh, and by melding um, the RPC and GSS, you get this RPC SEC GSS, which is the, uh, uh, the remote procedure call package with the GSS security mechanism uh, laid in as, as one of the, you know, as one of the security uh, mechanisms for the RPC. Now, I, I kind of think that actually that could be done with V3. I mean, that could have been done with V3, don't you think, Bruce? Oh, it has been. I mean, uh, yeah, V3 supports uh, all V3 implementations. Modern ones at this point support RPC set GSS as well. But it was uh, partly the V4 uh, uh, implementation effort that actually made that happen. Yeah, so, uh, so, so 